Good evening, church. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Glad to see each and every one of you here this evening. Yes. Welcome to New Life Fellowship Wednesday night Bible study. I just want to remind everyone, man, that this is a Bible study. If you, I'm sure you know this, but keep it in mind always. When it comes to questions about the Bible, there's no dumb question. Amen. Okay? Amen. Don't be embarrassed. If you don't ask, you won't learn. This is something we discussed here lately. I know I haven't said it a lot, but just a reminder. Okay, uh, I do want to remind you quickly that we got a flyer on the uh, bulletin board. Uh, May fifth, six, no, six, no, seven, six seven, seven, and eight uh, at Brother Joe Washburn's church. They're having a tent revival. Uh, so if y'all want to go out there, I think it starts around 6.30. But check the flyer out. It's on the, it's on the bulletin board. So anyway, uh, there's some other things on the bulletin board. So check those out as well. All right, let's go to our Abba Father. Abba Father, once again, we just want to thank you and praise you for this day. I thank you so much that we have a place to come to worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, I pray that as we study your word tonight, that we may learn what your word says, what it means, and how we may apply it to our life. Yes. Be with our beloved Pastor Roger as he brings this message, these words of wisdom out of your word, Father, to apply to our lives. I pray for a hedge of protection around us, about us this evening. Father, thank you that that hedge of protection is going to stay with us. We study your word. And those that cannot be here for whatever reason, Father, if they need a healing in their body, we ask that your healing virtue go to them. Those that are traveling, that are probably on their way now, Father God, uh, your head protection is round about them as well. Bring them back healed and safe, Father God, that they can they can give a testimony as this song. Uh, says, uh, give a testimony as what you have done for them. I bind the works of the enemy. I render it useless and powerless. Jesus. And I ask you, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, come and dwell with us this evening. And as always, we give you our glory and certainly all of the praise, and we ask all of this in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus, whom we love. Declare it by saying, Amen. Amen. So be it. All right. I don't know about y'all, but sometimes life will just bring you down and make you think, what is the purpose? Why do I even try? But we try so we can make it to heaven and we take as many souls with us as we can. Yes. It's not about our flesh and blood. It's not about the problems you're going through. He doesn't want your car. He doesn't want your house. He don't want your money. He wants your soul. Amen. And so tonight, give him your best. Push everything aside. If you're having trouble, just stop singing and ask God to help you push it away. Hallelujah. Because we bring stuff in, and we really just need to leave it out there. Yes. Where it belongs, out in the world. And we're going to praise and worship our God. Yes. He is our comforter, our healer, our protector. Yes. He is our king. Amen. Amen. Church, no matter what you're going through, like Judy said a while ago, God's still on the front, church. Yes. 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 It's when you really show what you Amen. believe when you're going Amen. through something. Amen. How you react. Yes. 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 You keep on trusting Him, yes. just like you did in the beginning. And God said, I'm going to bring you through. You will come pick out the Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Church, turn it tonight to Hebrews chapter 12. I started this a couple of weeks ago and I never really got to finish it, so I'm going to go ahead and continue with it tonight. Especially with all the stuff that's going on in the world today, my heart really has been heavy because of the fact he said in the last day there's going to be a great falling away. Yes, it is. And there's a lot. This generation just does not know the God. They, just, they don't know the God we know. Amen. Amen. Hebrews chapter 12. And what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about races and weights. Okay. Amen? Amen. And how the prize, we've got to keep your eye on the prize. Yes, that's right. 
that no matter what we go through, it's going to be worth it, church. It's going to be worth it. Amen. 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 Hebrews chapter 12, beginning at verse 1. So since we have such a, I'm reading to the Living Translation, so since we have such a huge crowd of men of faith watching us in the grandstand, let us strip off anything that slows us down or holds us back. Especially those sins that wrap themselves so tightly around our feet and trip us up. And let us run with patience the particular race that God has set before us. Keeping your eyes on Jesus. Jesus. He didn't say keep your eyes on it's other it. Christians. Nah. He didn't say keep your eyes on what the world's doing. Nah. He said keep your eyes on Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. He's our leader and instructor. He's willing to die a shameful death on the cross because the joy he knew would be his afterwards. And now he sits in a place of honor by the throne of God. If you want to keep from becoming faint hearted and weary, think about his patience. As sinful men did such terrible things to him. After all, you have never yet struggled against sin and temptation until you sweat great block, drops of blood. Amen. Church, we need to have a, a steadfast faith. Yes. Jesus said, well, the devil don't want your house. He don't want your car. He don't want your money. He wants your faith. He wants your soul. Yep, that's right. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we've got to be steadfast. Even in the hard times, the difficult times, when things come against you, you don't understand why is this happening. I've done this, this, and this. Why? Listen, a lot of times things are happening because you are doing the right thing. Yeah, oh, yeah. And, and the end, the end, the end, the end, the end, the end is not going to sit by and just let it happen. He's going to do everything in his power to steal and discourage. Oh, yeah. Amen? Yeah. So we have to have a steadfast faith. And it warns us against developing unbelief. But Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews chapter 3. Verse 7. And since Christ is so much superior, the Holy Spirit warns us to listen to him, to be careful to hear his voice today and not let our hearts become set against him as the people of Israel did. They steeled themselves against his love and complained against him in the desert while he was testing. You ever think maybe God is testing you? Because God knows something's fixed to happen in your life even greater than what you've been through. So he's putting you through a test because he wants you to know that you can't overcome anything. The Bible says all things are possible with him. All things are possible. Amen. But God was patient with them 40 years, though they tried his patience sorely. He kept right on doing his mighty miracles for them to see. But God says, I was very angry with them, for their hearts were always looking somewhere else and stood up to me. Mm -hmm. Boy, that describe our society today. Looking for something everywhere else but the right place. Right. And they never found the paths I wanted them to follow. We ask God, God, I, I want your will in my life. I want you to tell me what direction I want to go. Then you've got to ask God. You've got to spend some time with God. You've got to hear God. Amen? Amen. Then God, then God pulled his anger against him, bound himself with an oath that he would never let them come to this place of rest. Beware then of your own hearts, dear brothers, lest you find that way to and are evil and unbelieving and are leading you away from the living God. Speak to each other about these things every day while there's still time, so that none of you will become hard against God, being blinded by the glamour of sin. Amen. For we, if we are faithful to the end, trusting God, just as we did when we first became Christian, we will share in all that belongs to Christ. Amen. He said to the church, don't be like Israel. They were an example. They were to teach us to show us. Even after God did all the mighty things he did, and some of us, we've, we've seen God do some mighty things. One of the biggest miracles we ever saw was when God changed our life, changed our heart. Amen? And we've seen miraculous healing. We've seen deliverance. We've seen all kinds of things. And, and they saw these things, but they forgot. They let the circumstances, they let what they were going through, what other people were saying, what they were experiencing, change what they believed about their God. Yeah. And no matter what we go through, no matter what we do, no matter what we experience, it doesn't change who God is. Right. It doesn't right. change who His Word is. Right. Amen? Right. Amen. This is that you will become hard against God being blinded by the glamour of sin. Mm -hmm. Listen, the devil makes sin look good. Amen. He makes it feel good. He makes it sound good. But there is a payday. There is a consequence. Mm -hmm. You know, especially when you're young, you don't think about consequences. You're just living for the moment. You just enjoy the time. You don't think about what it's going to cost you down the road. I know some of us older people, if we knew what we knew 
Now, back then, we would make a lot different choices. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But he says, don't let sin or the glamour of sin blind you. Amen. Yeah, the devil, he'll give you something to get something. Mm -hmm. You make it look really good and sound really good, but it's going to cost you. And God says, whenever He blesses you, there's no strings attached. Yeah, yeah. Okay? Josh? It's also very fleeting. It's also very fleeting. The, the Amen. Or the, the Amen. feeling you get from it, it Amen. just disappears, and then you're still left with your troubles. Think about Moses. He could have had everything the world had to offer. I mean, he was second in line in the, the nation of Egypt. And he could have had everything. But he turned his back on everything the world had to offer to accept what God has for him. Amen. And in the natural, if you look at it, he ended up on the backside of the desert. He came to a bunch of people that didn't want him coming in the first place. They didn't believe in him. To deliver them. I mean, what God was so didn't look so good in the natural. And what the devil had over looked pretty good to him in the natural. But he had to make a choice. And he made the right choice. And by making the right choice, God was able to use him to deliver his people who have yeah. been crying out for you know, people cried out for 400 years and God sent them to deliver, and they still didn't even want to deliver, he said. Josh, you have your hand up? Okay. Praise the Lord. I need to drink water. Praise the Lord. There was someone else here. That was a real good praise the Lord. <laughs> When God did deliver them and had them out in the wilderness, uh, He provided everything for them. Uh, and yeah. They got they got sick of it uh, because you know they look they kept looking back and they're like yes. we'd rather go back to Egypt so because at least there we had all the good fish and all that. How many times have you heard someone that was serving God and they get discouraged because of what's going on, thinking I was better off when I was in the world? Really? Right. You're headed to hell. Charlie was talking about she was listening to a preacher while ago was talking about hell. Every now and then I throw a hell message in because I need to wake up sometimes. Amen. Amen. You don't want your worst enemy to go to hell. I don't care what they've done or how bad they you God didn't even create it for mankind. He created the devil and his angels. Amen. And sometimes you think, well, I wish that person would go to hell. You don't really mean that. You really don't want them to. Amen. Amen. We need a faith that endures, church. Hebrews chapter 6. Now, Gary said this is a Bible study, so don't let me do all the talking, okay? Yeah. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 11. Again, from the Living Translation. And we are anxious that you keep right on loving others as long as life lasts, so that you will get your full reward. Did you catch that? Part of the reason we'll get a full reward is because we continue to love other people. Amen. Then knowing what lies ahead for you, you won't become bored with being a Christian nor become spiritually dull and indifferent, but you will be anxious to follow the example of those who receive all that God has promised them because of their strong faith and their patience. Amen. We need faith, church, but you also need to have patience. Amen. Amen. You got your faith over here, and the object of what you're believing for is over here. And faith and patience is like a bridge yeah. between the two. Yeah. So you got to be patient. Sometimes we want God to be like a magic genie. We want to rub the magic lamp, say the magic words, poof, God yeah. perform. Yeah. And you know what? I wish it was that easy sometimes, but it's not that easy. And if it was that easy, we'd be spoiled. Yeah. If we never go through that, we'd never know what God can do. Amen? Amen. Pastor? Yes, sir? I like in verse 11 where it says, as long as life lasts. A lot of people, uh, a lot of, like when they get on in their age, they think, well, my ministry's done. You know, I don't need to do much anymore. Uh, we're going until the very end. we got to run the race yeah. until yeah. the very end. Amen. God can use you whether you're five years old or 85 years old. Amen? Amen? Amen. Before I moved out here to Cal uh, from California, I was taking care of this this, uh, this older woman. She was about in her 90s, and uh, every time I was over at her house helping, you know, she always encouraged me and 
lifted me up and shared some books with me. And, uh, you know, she was saying, you know, my time's done here. I, you know, I feel like I have nothing more to give to people. And this was about two months before she passed away. And I told her, I said, look, you've been ministering to me and encouraging me this whole time. Your work has not been finished. You're still working for God, whether you think so or not. Amen. You know, it's, it's almost sad that we can't, people who live long and have risen, you almost wish you could bottle it up and pass it down to the younger generation. It's sad that they, when we pass, we take all that with us. Amen? But you never know who you're encouraging. And listen, it doesn't matter. I've had, a, I've had children, like when Dustin was young, four or five years old, Man, when that kid prayed for me, I just seen him pray for me at beginning in. <laughs> I mean, he believed that child like faith, and he believed. And I prayed, Lord, I'm willing, I'm 100 years old. God's still using me to minister to people. Amen? Amen. Amen. We'll roll you up there. We'll roll you up there. You'll roll me up there? <laughs> <laughs> He says that knowing what lies ahead of you won't become bored with being a Christian. If we really are living a Christian life, it's not boring. Amen. Every day is a new adventure. Yes. Yes. Every day we've got something to look forward. God wants to do something in our lives every day. Yes. Amen. Yes. Don't become spiritually dull and indifferent, but you will be anxious to follow the example of those who receive all that God has promised you. Why did they get what they were promised? Because of their strong faith and because of their patience. Hebrews chapter 10. Verse 36. Let's go back to verse 35. Do not let this happy trust in the Lord die away no matter what happens. Remember your reward. I said you got to keep the prize in sight. You got to remember, there's a payday coming. It's all going to be worth it. Amen. You need to keep on patiently doing God's will if you want Him to do for you all that He has promised. Amen. There's a lot of people saying, well, "God, how come you're not doing this? And how come you're not doing this in my life? What are we doing?" Amen. He said, "We got to continue to do what we're supposed to be doing." If God's going to do what He needs to do in our lives. Yeah, yeah. I told you this before, we talked about it before. And prophetic, when someone gives you a prophetic word, that doesn't mean you should sit down and it's just going to happen. You've got to continue doing what you're supposed to be doing for that prophecy to come to pass. Yeah, that's right. Amen? And a lot of people have misunderstand that. Well, thus said the Lord, so I can just sit down and wait on it. It's going to happen. Church, you are still be sitting there wondering, well, God, what happened? Amen? Amen? Uh, when I was when I was in Colorado, I had we had a middle aged her name was this is March She was eighty six years old. And she always prayed for her children. And she only had two saints. When she passed away and everything, but you know now, because I still talk to her, to her she became pastor. So I I, I I sometimes I remind her, you know, she didn't get to see all her children come to the Lord. But you know now all her children came to the Lord and you know, it's her her uh, prayers and everything. Even though she was gone now, her husband was still got plenty of young people to see faithful. So she knew that God, even though she didn't get to see it, she knew that God was going to all Amen. her children. Amen. My grandmother was the same way she prayed for her family. She lived for the Lord and Eventually, she passed away, but nearly, I think, as far as I can recollect, everyone in her family ended up serving God. Amen. Some of them got saved on their deathbed, but they still got saved. Amen. Amen. So yeah. His coming will not be delayed much longer. If you know anything about Christianity, if you know anything about God, and you know anything about what's going on in the world, you know that's the truth. Yes. He's coming to church, and He's coming sooner than what a lot of people want to believe. And those who's Faith has made them good in God's sight must live by faith, trusting Him in everything. You know, it's, when things are going good, it's like we don't really need God. Yep. It's like 
God, I got this. Amen. You know, I'm, I'm good. I, my finances are good. My health's good. My kids are little angels. My wife's being really sweet to me. So I, I got this. But then when tragedy happens, oh man, God, where are you? I need you. I need you to move. I need you to do this. We've got to trust Him in everything, church, yeah, yeah. at all times. Yeah. Good times, the bad times. Yeah. Otherwise, if they shrink back, God will have no pleasure in them. But we have never turned our backs on God and sealed our faith. No, our faith in Him assures our souls of salvation. Amen. It's your faith that overcomes the world. Amen? Amen? And in chapter 11, we're reminded of many who had this kind of faith. And the emphasis continued with our own life of faith describes as a race. And he said, in which we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. A cloud of witnesses refer to those mentioned in the previous chapter in chapter 11. These Old Testament saints like Abraham, Moses. In what way were the witnesses? The word can be used to mean a spectator. And it can also be suggest that they're looking down on us from heaven. But I want you to turn in Ecclesiastes chapter 9. We talked about this last time. There's a lot of people believe my grandmother or my mom or my dad are looking down on me. They're speaking to me. Yes. Okay? Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 5. It says, For the living at least know that they will die, but the dead know nothing. They don't even have their memories. Whatever they did in their lifetime, loving, hating, ending is long gone. And they have no part in anything here on earth anymore. So go ahead, eat, drink, and be merry, for it makes no difference to God. Wear fine clothes with a dash of cologne. Live happily with a woman you love through the fleeting days of life. For the wife God gives you is your best reward down here for all your earthly toil. Whatever you do, do well, for in death, where you are going, there is no working or planning or knowing or understanding. Now, I explained this last time. If you're in heaven, you're not going to remember what happened here. Because there's no tears, there's no sorrow. You're not going to know who made it and who didn't make it. There's a lady who passed away just recently, and Joy has really been troubled with this situation because she can't get peace in her heart whether she's in heaven or not. And I told her, listen, I'd rather believe that she is, and you're never going to know here, and you're not going to know when you get over there. Okay? That's one of the blessings of being in heaven. You're not going to remember all the difficulties, all the mistakes, all the things that happened. Okay? Now, when you go to hell, you're going to remember everything. Do you remember the rich man? He sent somebody back to my brother's. You're going to remember every time you turned your back away from God, every time you rejected Him, every time you had the opportunity. You're going to remember all the mistakes you made. You're going to remember all the things that happened in this life. And that's going to be part of the torment. And it's going to be for all eternity. Amen. Amen. You know what the grace? You're not going to be able to change it. You ever been in a hopeless situation where you couldn't change it? Nothing you do, you couldn't change it. Can you imagine that for all eternity? Amen? Amen. The word also can refer to those who bear witness. And really what I believe this word means is, by their lives they have borne witness to the value of faith. By their lives they encourage us to run this race of faith. Amen. It doesn't mean that they're sitting up in heaven watching everything you're doing. Okay? What well, got quiet on that one, didn't it? I stepped on some religious things. Yeah? No, I mean, how, how do you, like, most people, when you're going to be at the viewing or at the funeral of a loved one or whatever, they'll say, I know that mama is looking down on me, or I know that dad's looking down and they're taking care of me. How do you explain to them, no, they're not? Take them to the work. That's all you can do. Because it's just like this. Everybody believes that this scripture is in the Bible, and it's not. Cleanliness is next to God. It's not in there. It ain't here. 
But society has picked it up just like this. Well, my mom and dad are looking down on me. Could you, listen, if you really loved your mom and dad, would you want them looking down from heaven and seeing what you're going through right now? Could you imagine what that would do to their hearts? That wouldn't be paradise for them either. Exactly. You know, and, but I, I know I've been in a situation and, and everybody wants to soothe them because they're grieving and it helps them to know or think that their mom is present or whatever. And I try to explain to them, you may feel the spirit, you know, of your loved one, you know, because of the situation or because it's like something you prayed for before or whatever. Because um, that's how I felt when I was in the hospital. I felt like I had the presence of mom, but I had a peace. I wasn't thinking she was looking down to say, okay, you finally went through the surgery or whatever, you know. But I tried to explain to them that they wouldn't have peace and paradise in heaven and wouldn't be looking forward. You wouldn't be looking forward to that if you got to find out that your kid, when you're looking down, ended up, you know, turning at 180 from when, from when you left, you know, or that the possibility that they won't make it. That's the thing. Can you imagine being in heaven and knowing know that you love or your family members yeah. didn't make it? Yeah. You could never have any peace yeah. while you're there. Yeah. And that's, why, that's one of the blessings of him shielding our yeah. hearts so we don't know these things. Now, I want to say this to you. You have to be careful because if you remember when Saul went to the witch of Endor mm -hmm. and she, he on, wanted to call up Samuel. Come on. That was not Samuel. That was a familiar spirit. So you have to be careful and not be deceived because sometimes that voice that you hear or that presence you feel Maybe a familiar spirit. Amen. 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 What, what exactly? Uh, are they there for harm or are they there for hurt? They're not there for you good. No. A familiar spirit means it, it's very familiar yes. with the person or, or, your, or someone in your family or your likes, your dislikes, but they're familiar with what's going on so they can more or less fake it to where you believe it. Yes. Just like Saul did with, the, with Sam. He really believed that it wasn't Sam. So you can't move on because... No, once you, once you go over there, there's no coming back. Okay? No, I'm saying you can't move on because you're being manipulated. You're in grief, and if a familiar spirit is visiting you or whatever, you're thinking that, oh, yeah, you know, I, I'm at peace with that. But, yeah. It's not. You know, I heard long teach and everything else about familiar spirit, but I really never questioned and asked her, you know, because she had said that when little Brittany passed, that she felt her familiar spirit in the room, you know. But she when, said, what she was talking about there is she felt like a familiar presence, that, but yeah. it wasn't necessarily a familiar spirit. Okay, okay. so there, there is a difference. Okay. Good, because I got familiar presence. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. My deal is, if everybody goes to heaven, who's in hell? Nobody. A lot of people preach everybody into heaven, but the Bible says that more are going to go to hell than going to go to heaven. It says hell had to enlarge itself because of it. And he says, broad is the way that goes to destruction, and narrow is the way. And, and bless my mom's heart, everybody went to heaven. <laughs> she always wanted to preach the good thing, or see the good thing. And I told her all the time, mom, not everybody goes to heaven. That's what, that's what she chose to believe. You know, she wanted to look on the good side of things. Amen. Brenda? I have a good one for you. So, uh, Kenneth's dad, he's a good man, loved the Lord, but he didn't go to church because his back hurt a lot and, and just a lot of things. But um, when he passed, it wasn't that night. Ken and I were there when he passed at the hospital saying goodbye to him when he passed. I think he was there too. Anyway, uh, so it wasn't that night or the next night, but the following day, his mom, we went over to see her, and she and my sister-in-law both said, he walked into the bedroom fully clothed with his cowboy hat on, western clothes, sat down on the bed, and said, I'm so happy they found my name. Then my sister-in-law says, my mother-in-law said, 
He just sat here and said, I'm so happy that got my name. And when she served the Lord, was a Bible Sunday school teacher, loved the Lord with all of her heart. Anyway, he gets up, goes out, goes to Joanne's bedroom, and waves at her, and smiles and waves at her, and then vanishes. What was that? Both of them declared it was true. Possibility that the Lord allowed an angel to give them peace in their heart and mind, but it was not them. And, and sometimes when we're grieving and going through things, we'll see things and believe things that's not necessarily so. To give us our own peace. Okay? But according to Scripture, once you pass over, it's just like Catholics believe in purgatory. There's no purgatory. Mm -hmm. Paul said to leave this body is to be yeah. present with the Lord. When you're absent this body, you're present with the Lord. And there's no coming back. There's no crossing over. Okay? Would that not kind of be like she stood in front seat for him because she did serve the Lord? You know, you and your whole household shall be saved. She, uh, and too, I could have had, she probably brought confirmation to her that, uh -huh. that he's at peace and, and he brought her peace. Amen. And sometimes God's mercy, he'll let things like that happen to bring us some peace in our own hearts and minds. But as far as it being, because my grandmother, my mom's mom, I don't know how many times people say, well, I, I heard her voice or I, I felt her presence. It was not her. Okay? And I say, I don't want to bust a lot of religious bubbles. I'm just trying to tell you the truth, church. And I say, this is what it says right here. Okay? It says they have no memory. They have no understanding. They have no knowing. Okay? Thank God they have. The word God says that God is the God of all comfort. So at times, I do believe, I had an incident after my mom passed away because we were just so close. And she was like my best friend in the world. And I just didn't think I was going to live through that. But I was riding down the road one day. I didn't see her or anything. But I was just in my heart, my mind thinking, God, I miss my mom so much, you know. And I felt that familiar presence of what you were talking about. I could literally feel her presence in the cab of that truck with me. I even lay my hand over like I could just seem like I could feel her holding my hand. I believe that was God's way of talking to me. She wasn't there, but he let me feel the presence yeah. just to give me confidence. Give you a reassurance and bring you peace. I'll tell you, I know we get away from our subject, but be careful and we, as a Christian, you should never do this anyway. Don't go to psychics. That's right. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. If someone that goes to this church that used to go to a psychic, and the person went to my mom, and my mom prophesied some things over her. Went to a psychic, paid the psychic $500, and the psychic was telling them some of the same oh, things. Yeah. Okay? But it's through a Omega spirit. Mm -hmm. And I say, the devil will give you a little yeah. bit. Yeah. And it'll be good, right. but it's to draw you in. Yeah. And if you start doing that, that spirit starts telling you all these things, and before long, you'll quit going to the Bible, quit going to God, and you'll start going over and paying these psychics to, to yeah. tell you yeah. things that you want to hear. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, that, that is so true. Uh, when I went to go see, after Brian had died, I went and saw a psychiatrist. And the psychiatrist told me that he wanted to know, well, he asked me, he said, how did Satan get Eve to eat the fruit? And I said he lied to her, and he said no. No. He told her something so close to the truth that she believed it. And he wanted to know what what he told me, and I'm going, they had a lot, they had a lot. There's nothing, there's no gray in here. But the truth was, is I went into the bathroom, and I'm sliding down the door, and I'm, and I'm asking, Brian, how am I going to do this without you? See, the truth says... I can do all things through Christ Jesus. Satan appeases to the flesh. So my flesh was going, how am I going to do this without you? It was easy to believe. But as far as Richard Jesus. Oh, well, it's just, I was just going to say that the Bible clearly states that. I'm sorry. Psychics, the Bible clearly states that the psychics and stuff like that is just spiritual right. prostitution. Right. That's what it is. Yeah. Just like God has his thing, the devil has a counterfeit for That's everything right. that God has, okay? Yeah. And, and there, there are psychics out there that yeah. they're good at what they do. Yeah. 
the they're empowered by the not the Holy Spirit, but the wrong kind right. of spirit. Amen. Okay? Ouija boards, same way. Right. If you don't ever buy your kill a Ouija board. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're, when you do, the Bible says don't give a place to the devil. When you get into Ouija boards and stuff like that, you're open the door and you're inviting the devil into your household and into your kids' lives. Okay? And I say, a lot of people think, oh, that's just a harmless game. No, no, it's not. You're opening doors. There's, 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 there's good things in the Spirit, and there's bad things in the Spirit. Okay? Well, if our words can kill, if our words that we speak out can either kill or they can bring great things of God, then our actions even more so. So if you if you just think that it's harmless to be playing a game, but yet that's you're moving on the actions of your flesh, then how how could you think that it wouldn't be harmful if that thing is moving around like when we were kids? You know, and we didn't think anything of it. I don't know, have, have all of y'all probably been somewhere at a party that you put your fingers on the Ouija board or whatever when you were younger? I've never seen one, don't want to. <laughs> <But> I'm <laughs> saying, <laughs> devil, he was, he was an angel. You know, he was one of the, the top angels. He knows all everything that we do, you know. So he's going to come back and try to... Get us, steal our souls, and play the game if well, if not better, because he has to work double time. You know? And if, so, you, if you've ever dealt with a Ouija board or anything <laughs> occult, you needed to renounce that, yes. repent of it, and put it out in the blood. Okay? That way you give no place. And I'm going to tell you something, you can do some research on this. Get to looking into the cartoons and stuff that our kids are watching nowadays. Yeah. The occult and magic and all that stuff is in, and you think, well, that's just cartoons. That's Tramp right. a child the way he should go. That's right. When they're young, just like with Islam, they train their kids when they're young. And so, if they can get that into kids when they're young, then they'll they'll the occult, uh, mysticism, all that stuff. Which you work? There's nothing wrong with that. Those are good things. Same way Harry Potter and all that stuff. People say Pokemon, all, all those things that say so harmless. But if you do research on them, find out they're not harmless, church. Okay, man. One time here in this church, I was doing counseling with a, a little young lady. I think she was 14 years old, and her mom had asked me to counsel with her because she was uh, uh, just having erotic behaviors at home and doing things that you know, weren't weren't common for her nature. And uh, so anyway, in this time she told, mentioned to me that she was playing uh, Witches Witches on the computer and her mother didn't like it. And I said, you know, that's not really good. That can open doors and blah, blah, blah. Well, sure enough that uh, sometime around that same event, um, a pastor, an evangelist come down and uh, she had a demon from that, from that. And it got cast out right here, but the demon talked back because he was sitting on close to the front row. And uh, when the demon said, you can't have her in a demonic voice, how this little girl, oh but that was from which playing witches, witches on her computer at home. I remember that. Because at that time we had about 20 Baptist youth that came that night yes. to do services. It was scary. And, uh, the lady stood up, and the young man was praying for him. In fact, there was one guy in here. He was he's a spiritual person. I think he went back there. Was going, to, and the guy told him, "No, let me handle this." And he went back there, and sure enough, she did. She spoke in a voice, and when she spoke in that voice. You should have seen those little Baptist guys' faces. Like, wow! What are we doing? Demonic. But church, those things are real, and in these last days, you're going to see more and more and more of that. Okay? In the early church we saw, and you're going to see more and more in the last days too. You know, people even still do the voodoo dolls. They still do the voodoo. Rusty lived in Midland, and there was a next door neighbor that did the voodoo dolls, and he didn't like, that lady didn't like Rusty, so she's hanging a voodoo doll in his tree. He got up there and got it out of the tree. He threw it in the trash can, got up there, the next, woke up next morning, and that voodoo doll's higher up in the tree. The, the, listen, they have power. 
Uh, there's a guy, his name is Mike Warnke. He used to be a Satan high priest. And uh, he was talking about how that they would put spells and stuff and they'd go out and do things and put curses on people. But they couldn't curse a real Christian. Amen. He said, the power that's in us is greater than the power that's in the world. Yes. So you need to realize that. Yes. Not to be afraid of the devil, the devil is afraid of you. So the same power that defeated him is the same power that we got on the inside of us. Mom would, we would go and she would call me up and she'd say, I need my prayer warrior. I don't need my daughter. I have a very serious situation here to pray. Are you prayed up spiritually? And I'd say, yeah, Mom, I'm ready. And I had no idea what we were going into. But the things that, that we prayed for a couple of times, Mom even said, I need you to cover yourself. And it was, a, it was a cloth that had the cross on it. And she said, I need, to cover, I need you to cover yourself because we are fixing to have to really deal with Satan himself. Because wow. he was so attached in this person's life. And she was 16 years old, the one that I remember the most. And I said, Mama, I'm ready. And she said, I'm not even ready for this. But she said, we have to do this. And we have to do it now. There's nobody else. And she's, and so I did what she said, and I understand why now. Because it was probably one of the strongest uh, spirits that we were ever up against. But Mother did not. You know how Mom, she stayed in there. She, she, was a spiritual she, she did not right let go. And I mean, bless her heart, there was just sweat pouring off of her and off of me and we went for a good hour until it gave in and gave up on, right. on her body but it was it was amazing but don't go and think that you're going to lay hands on somebody or pray for somebody and i've learned through those years i'm particular about who lays hands on me in prayer and i'm not being mean about it, I'm just wanting you to know there may be something in, in me that you cannot pray for. You know? Just like when we can impart to other people good things, you can also have bad things imparted right. back and to you. So that's why like it's a good careful to no lay hands on anybody suddenly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And that's another thing is if you're going to go and do deliverance, Beverly, you know this as well as anybody. You're gonna, you better know that you're prayed up and you're colored on the right. blood. Because right. the devil's gonna know. Yeah. Just like the yeah. guy yeah. was trying to cast out, and he yeah. said, I know who Paul is, and I know who Jesus is, but so who the heck are you? Yeah. And stripped the clothes off of them, they run off naked. Yeah. So yeah. the devil knows if you or where you need yeah. to be with right. God. So don't ever try to take and, and that too, there's a time and place. Amen. We're getting totally away from our stuff. There's a time and place for deliverance. There was a lady evangelist, Patsy, that came to a church, a little church, Pentecostal church. And there was a guy that was going to church there, a young man. And he had a, a demon, had a demonic spirit in him. And she told me and Jamie, I was on one side of him, Jamie's on the other side. And she told us to take him by the arms as she began to pray for him. If you're going to do something like that, somebody's got that in, you need to take them into a prayer room with some people that you know, that know what they're doing and deal with it. Because the devil would like to put on a show out here. Yeah. Yeah. What he did, that young man was probably half our size, but because of the demon was in him, just like the guy that broke the chains and stuff, he, he was slinging Jamie around over here, slinging me around over here like nothing to it. I mean, we couldn't hold him. He just, I mean, he had more power than we had. But that was a wrong thing to do because the devil showed up and scared a lot of people. Okay? So, that's where you've got to be led by the Spirit of God. Okay? It's okay to say no. If somebody asks you to go and pray with them for someone, it's okay to say no. Because you're going to do them more harm That's in going right. and not being prayed at than what if you just stayed out of it. Right. So, Kenneth Davis okay. said one time when he was a pastor, somebody called him and asked him to come to the hospital and pray for him. And he was going to do it. And he said, the Lord spoke to him and said, no. Now, the people got mad and got upset with him. But God had something that he wanted to do in that situation, and he didn't need him going over there doing anything. That's where you've got to be. Listen, 
Somebody calls you and want prayer, you automatically want to go pray for them. But it's in God's timing. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, I, know a, I know a preacher who uh, one night we was going to conference, and this lady did have a demon in it, and uh, we prayed for her, and she laid out her spirit, so he thought she was slain in the spirit. And uh, the Lord told me that she wasn't slain, it was a demon. And so uh, I went up there and I whispered in the ear, so the demon out, so she started acting out. And, uh, and he came to her. And uh, I guess he tried to cast the demon out then. He saw all the action going on. You know what that demon did? That demon threw him way across the pulpit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if that's because he had something in him that was unrepentant, that he should not have went over there. And he had some unclean in his life. Demons will throw you. They are strong yes. you say. Yes. I look in the place to believe it. And they know who you are. They know what's in you. They know yeah. everything. So yeah. before you even go to do something like that, make sure that within you you're clean, that you examine yourself. Man. Because they know. There was a pastor that was going to pray for a person who had spirit of lust. Mm -hmm. And he began to rebuke that spirit of lust, and all of a sudden he began to choke. That's up. right. That's right. Because he was not where he needed to be. Yes, ma'am. So um, I was just talking to Julie right now. Um, so when everything was going on with me and my husband and stuff, and I'd be like, give me your hands. Like, I would just, give me your hands. And he was like, wow, I was like, cut, I'm going to pray. Let's, let's pray. So he would give me his hands, and I would pray everything. And it would everything would just, you know, calm down like she'd be okay. And then after a while, then everything would come back, and it would, you know, be chaos in the household. And I'm like, uh-uh, come back over here. So even like that last night before everything happened, um, I would I would pray either out loud or in the silence in my head, you know, and I would just have to touch him or, you know, like even if I'm barely touching him, that's when he would fall asleep. And as soon as I fell asleep, that's when everything started happening. Mm -hmm. Like, why? Sometimes when a person doesn't get deliverance, that demon, like she saw, that, that demon will quiet down. Mm -hmm. To deceive you That's right. and make you think it's okay. Mm -hmm. And I say, once you go, once you went to sleep, or once you put them, once you went, then it rolls back up because there's no threat there. Anymore. I say, yeah, because it's like once I let my guard down, it's like, aha. And then I came back. And it's like, also, remember this if you try to do deliverance on someone and you don't know what you're doing or you're not prepared, that person can actually end up worse than they were That's in the right. beginning. Right. Yeah, remember the story where the demons were cast out of the person and the house was clean and swept and the demon came back and found the house empty. That's why it's so important. If you somebody gets delivered, don't let them walk out that door and never see them again because it said it came back and brought seven other spirits worse than the first back into their lives. And people, when you get delivered, you need to keep them around positive people. Yeah, You've got to fill them yeah. with the Word of God. They need to get yeah. baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Because if that house is clean, yeah, the devil's going to come right back up and set up the house again. Okay? And if, you, if you're dealing with someone that, and you don't know what you're doing, you, know, you just stir the devil up in them. And then before long, that devil's going to come and bring more. more spirits with it. And even this, a spirit of fear. That's right. Can open a door to more demonic spirits coming in, yeah. but that, that is that's just opening point. That's the story. Simple as a spirit of fear. Yeah, because I sure did say I was like, Lord, I do not know what I'm doing. I was like, please help. And so I reverted back to my Catholic roots. I was Hail Mary, Our Father. Like I kept repeating everything that I remember, and I'm like, okay, what else? Like, what else do I do? So as soon as he would fall asleep, I'd be like, you know, I would, you know, say a little prayer over him, and you know, try to like get him to, you know, like whatever. Like that's my husband. Let him go. He you cannot have him. He is mine. Like he belongs to us, and and stuff like that. And it would be like I say, it would be okay. And once I would get so drained and tired, that's when everything started back up again, and it's like, oh. Jesus. Because all it did was quiet down yeah. and never got delivered, got quiet down. Now, that doesn't mean don't continue to pray for your husbands or your wives or stuff like that. Because your prayer is the only thing keeping them from going all the way. Okay? So if you do, you pray and you continue to pray and believe God for them. Uh, I'm just going to throw this in. And I don't mean this in a negative way. But do you know in most of the demonic movies that they make, 
They always use a Catholic priest. Why don't they set a Pentecostal yeah, priest? Yeah, I know that. Just saying. The movie won't happen. I used to be Catholic, and um, uh, my grandmother in Florida, she's, she's uh, Catholic too, but um, she always prays to the Virgin Mary. And since she always has a shrine set up, but I don't think we should. I don't think that's the proper thing to do here, praying to God. It's not. It's not. He says in scriptures, if you ask anything in my name, the Father, in nowhere in scripture does it say that we're supposed to pray to Mother Mary. Right. That's another uh, Catholic tradition, and I'm not knocking the Catholics. There's some beautiful Catholic people, but they, I didn't realize all this till Sister Jean started coming to church and she's sharing with me that if you're in the Catholic church, they don't push you to read scripture. They want you to take it from what the priest says to them. And yet, I've always been taught, study to show yourself through yeah. you need to know what's in here. And I tell people all the time, don't take my word for it. This is your salvation line. If you go to the scripture and find out what does God say to you about it. Amen. Okay? Amen. So, but no, I, just like the purgatory thing, there's no in-between. Once you die, you're either going to heaven or you're going to hell. They put them in purgatory, and that was a way for the church. You could buy them out of purgatory. Oh, my goodness. That just ain't, it's not so. Okay. Josh? Yeah, I also heard that, you know, the whole eat, no eating meat on Friday thing was just a push to help the fishermen get more income from the Catholic Church. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I don't mean this bad again, not really, because I don't know a whole lot about the, the Catholic religion, but I do know that the Romans couldn't control the Christians, so they developed a Roman Catholic Church yep. to give them control. And that's where a lot of that started. Yeah. And a lot of the traditions of the Catholic Church are based off of pagan yeah, yeah, yeah. rituals yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. nuns, all this stuff. There's a lot of people over and look into pagan religions and stuff, and you'll see a lot of the things that have passed over that the church still utilizes at home. Church, we got to close. We didn't get very far, but we got to close on that. I hope y'all got blessed tonight. Amen. I say, I'm not trying to discourage anybody or, or upset the apple cart, but if, just check it out for yourself. Find out for sure what the Bible says about it. Okay? And if you are going to take on demonic spirits and stuff like that, get somebody that knows what they're doing, that can hear God, that, that knows how to walk in the power and the authority of the, of the Lord and also in the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. All right. Anybody need prayer tonight? I don't scare the devil out of everything. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, just stand. We'll go ahead and be dismissed. <laughs> oh, glory. <laughs> Sister Charlene, will you dismiss us, please, ma'am? Oh, dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you that you're the one that we're supposed to worship and sing love on and thank you that we're not going to be fear, but we're going to be wise in you and you're going to so bless this church, bless the people that come in here, Father God, and we thank you that we always want to glorify you. So thank, thank you, Pastor Roger, and Pastor Joy, and everyone that's in this room, in this church, and hanging with us. So thank you, Father, for another good Wednesday night. And we'll yes. see you Sunday. Yes, thank you. Amen. 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 And y'all remember Pastor Joy in prayer. Keep her looking in prayer. Shake hands, look mixed, and don't get mixed up.